Now why would I let you play with my food? Ooh. Reactors, we got a reel in episode five of Netflix's Avatar The Last Airbender. We are halfway through this season. What do you guys think about the first four episodes and what do you think about episode five? Sound off. Episode four was an episode. I'm hoping that episode five is a little bit better and gets right back on track. With that being said, do me a solid and like this video. It truly helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you. Now is the time to reel it in. Right. Oh snap, already? Five, Fire Nation after them. What trouble did they get themselves into? Nice, Aang. Okay. Yeah, Katara, go ahead. What you got? What the hell? Ooh. What? Go ahead, ice blocks. Wow, I can't believe you got that so quickly. It took me two months to learn that move. That, that blows my mind. That blows my mind. She's got it all. <laughs> Appa. Yeah, Appa. It's just, it's so crazy with Katara. She's learning so fast, which is expected because it takes so much time. Your bending has gotten really sharp. I mean, you've been inventing new moves. I've learned everything I can from Grand Grand Scroll, so what I really need is to get the Northern Water Tribe. Water Bending Masters there will be able to take me to the next I level. I mean, do you really need those Water Bender Masters? I mean, you're absolutely doing crazy things right now. Like, what more can Paku teach her? Oh, oh, this episode. Yeah, Fire Nation did some damage. I love the way that Appa looks. Like I said, I've never seen the movie, and I just know the movie butchered Appa. Spirited away. We're dealing with one spirit or multiple spirits. I'm familiar with this episode from book one. So I'm guessing um, one spirit and that spirit being Hebei. It's Avatar's job to protect the natural world, and that's just as important as helping people. Drop. How many more forced have died because I wasn't here? Because I don't know what I'm doing! Mm, drop to his knees. <laughs> Momo is so cute. Found himself a little acorn. He's like, here, you can plant this. Start all over again. Seeds for the future, not past mistakes. Mm-hmm. Perfectly said. Hey. No, it's okay. I'm not what gonna hurt you. What is she doing out here by herself? My name's Sokka. Rhymes with Aka and Waka Waka. Does. <laughs> she looks very brave. Do you have a name? Maybe we can come up with one for her. How about Pippin Paddle Opsicopolis? Mm, the third. I feel like he said something of that or something just like that in the show. Name's Bonzu! Pippin Paddle Opsicopolis! The third! Sokka! No, wait. Oh, she ran, and she dropped that. The firebenders just wanted a clear path as they moved through the mountains. Mm. And that's why they burned down the forest? Yep. But after the fire, yep. strange things started happening. Strange things. A spirit. A few days ago, we sent out an expedition to search for food. And they never came back. My son, Xiong. He was taken. This is something deeper. Beyond this world. Something sinister. The people are beyond this world. I can get them back. Aang is gonna go to the spirit realm. Any news? None, except... Except what? One of the resupply merchants mentioned something about kids playing with ice blocks near Senlin Pass. But he was probably mistaken. Mistaken? So someone saw ice in a place where no ice should exist? <laughs> Most people would call that unusual, yeah. wouldn't they? Yeah. Lieutenant G? Unless they were an idiot. Wow. I'll send some men to investigate. No. I'll have to do it myself. Crew members aren't gonna like that one. Called him stupid. 
I've always admired how you manage your commanders. If it were me, I'd send more resources to Zhao. See what he can do with a little support. Water the most promising seeds. You taught me that. Tell Colonel Xinu to mobilize the archers. Archers? Which archers? Zhao didn't discover the Avatar. Zuko did. He's the one who displayed resilience and dedication. Whoa! That's what I expect from a future Whoa. heir. Whoa! Not self-serving flattery and coy whispers. He gave praise to Zuko and talked down on Azula. In the show, that's played out differently. It's Zuko that gets talked down upon and then the high praise goes to Azula. But I guess with this new take for an ad adaptation is that both of them have gone through, you know, abuse from their father. I need to get to the north so I can save the waterbenders. I also need to help these people so they don't lose their homes and the ones they love. You know what's crazy? He has yet to even start waterbending. But there's been plenty of times in which Katara could have, you know, stopped everything and then chose to, uh, you know, train him. I'm getting hungry. Hey, do you mind? I'm trying to concentrate here. <laughs> He's trying to lock in. in the spirit realm. This is cool. I think it worked. What? They're both in the spirit realm, huh? Oh, snap. Ah! That is not good. Somehow I brought you guys with me. How is that possible? How is that possible? Netflix made it possible. Get us back now! I'm, uh, I'm sorry! Uh, wow. Yo, where? What? This episode can turn out, you know, trippy. I heard some waterbenders might have been around these parts not long ago. No. But you remember hearing them. Sort of. Perhaps this... Mmm. Some painted. Did you see the waterbenders? No. <laughs> he still took it. He still took that payment. You're not getting it back. The Avatar. He's with some waterbenders. Is that right, Mookie? What, the Avatar? What those pirates said. No, it wasn't the pirates. It was that canyon guy. Oh, canyon guy. Ah! Ah! Help me! What? She's crazy! Who's crazy? <laughs> June, right? Right? That's her name? June? And Nyla. He's paralyzed. Star, you idiot. That tongue. A low life bounty hunter? Low life. One of the best bounty they hunters. Talk for a little boy. <laughs> I'll let it pass because your dad's kind of cute. Huh? Hey, yo. I've always felt I was a spiritually attuned person. That might be why I crossed over with you. Oh, is that a frog or a froggy thing? I'm liking the look of the spirit realm. None of you belong in here. What? Who said that? No human belongs in this realm. That is one big birdie. Birdie. That's an I owl. Know birdie. Oh my god. I am the spirit of knowledge itself. Yeah. How is he here? There's no library. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're hearing. Their small minds are incapable of comprehending my speech. They, however, are interlopers. Interlopers. The longer they stay, the more dangerous it will become for them. I wasn't expecting this. I'm pretty sure he doesn't pop up until book two. There are things in here that will reveal truths to humans. It will show them who they really are. Ooh. And that can cause a great deal of pain. And remember, stay on the path. Will we see you again? Hopefully in season two? You know, at your library where you're supposed to be? Wan Shitong. That that's the name. Oh, they, they, they turn, it turned blue. It turned blue. Whoa, 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 whoa. So when she absolutely loses it, her fire turns blue. Could have hurt him. That's his fault. He should have been better. Except this wasn't about the trainer. She's losing her spotlight to her brother. That was crazy. She has regular fire instead of it being blue. So I guess we're going to see, you know, how she progresses throughout, you know, this series into her having blue fire. June is the best at what she does, and that's finding people. She's a mercenary. Her loyalty is bought and sold. Her. How can you trust someone like that? June is a professional. 
June looks good. That's all I'm saying. So, tell me about this avatar. <laughs> all I'm saying is, can we can we get a Appa versus a Nyla, please? What I can't deal with is getting eaten by some giant spirit monster. Yo, you jinxed it. Hey, bye. Wow, looks really good. Please tell me that some spirit language only you can understand and is saying, Welcome, friends. Would you like some cake? <laughs> no, that's not what it's saying. Run, 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 run. Oh my god. Look at it. We're on the path. We're on the path. We'll run on the path. We're on the path. We're on the path. We're on the path. Get off the path! <laughs> I can't bend. Damn. Sokka. Sokka, do something. Hey, Skunky, why'd you pick up someone your own side? <laughs> didn't mean me. <laughs> hey! Sokka got yeeted. Okay, we got the owl. And we got Heivai. Who else is popping up in this episode? Pain. Pain. Oh my god, the fox. I must have landed harder than I thought. Hey, the looks on the spirits are really good in this episode. <laughs> You're funny. But they're cramming so much into this episode. We got spirits from book two and book one all in here. Do you always make jokes when you don't want to talk about something? What? That's not what I do. You should go. Using it as a shield? I hope you can recombobulate. Whoa. Uh, 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 Katara, do not go in that direction. Find the path, turn around. Oh, oh, this is so wrong. I think this is, she's back here in the past. Her mom, her mom, her mom. Oh, she has to experience this all over again. Katara, are you okay? Heck no, she's been lost without you. They're gonna show us her death all over again. Ooh. Spooky episode we got here. Camp in. You're still in the spirit realm, girl. Fire Nation! Mm, Fire Nation is here. Hi, her. We're gonna see her mom die. Fully played out. Damn, here we go. Where's the water bender? Dang. Or die. Can't bend. Wait! I'm the waterbender. Okay, so this is how it actually played out. Katara actually tried to waterbend, and she feels that weight because she feels like she got her mom killed. So much fear. Okay, what spirit we got here? Oh my god, what? Go? The face stealers in this episode? They have every freaking spirit I believe I know or that I remember in this episode. They're just picking and dropping them all in this episode. Ko is in here, the face stealer. Just don't show any emotions and you'll be fine. Oh, we're seeing his dad. For the strength and leadership displayed during his ice dodging trials, I grant this mark of the wise. Mm. To Sokka, to my son. Oh! You are a man now. You did make it exciting though. Bato. I was wonder, I was like, yo, we gotta get Bato in this episode because when you get June in the animated show, Bot that's the Bato episode. Selecting the right crew is part of being a wise leader. It's why we do the trials with help from our friends. You see? Now why don't you go find your sister and we can all celebrate. So Hakoda and Bato in this episode, plus a bunch of spirits in this episode, crazy. If it weren't for you, Sokka would have wrecked us. We're lucky to be alive. It was a tricky run. Even I only saw the breakers at the last second. You don't have to make excuses for him. I'd hoped when he really had to prove himself that he'd do better. His fear, Sokka's fear. The truth is not everyone is meant to have people's lives in their hands. Damn. Sokka's fear 
not living up to, you know, what his dad is expecting of him. Give in to your despair. <gasps> He's taking their faces. They showed emotion. Sokka just showed emotion and Katara showed emotion. Boom. Face snatched. Ooh, here we go, here we go, here we go. What are we here? Someone who can resist? Don't show emotion. Ah, oh, of course. It's my old friend. He looks so good. Avatar. One of your previous incarnations tried to slay me. I am Avatar Kurok. Why would I try to kill you? Oh, it was something about stealing the face of someone you love. But you know all about stealing, don't you? Oh, snap. All I want is to find my friends. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Now, why would I let you play with my food? Ooh. Dude, the face stealer looks phenomenal. Wow, this is so creepy. I love it. I mean, I have I have my my downs about this episode, but you know, the look, the spirits, they are nailing it. Remember back then I got spooked by that character. Absolutely terrified. Hello? Gyatso. Hey, you finally made it. <laughs> made it. There are lots of illusions here, but you've emerged from the fog. This is real. The firebenders attacked. It was sudden and swift. If it wasn't for that comet, the airbenders would have whooped ass. After Kyoshi told me that I need to get to the north to prevent a great tragedy from happening. Well, you need to freaking start waterbending. My friends, they're somewhere in the fog. There's the fog of lost souls, imprisons people in their darkest memories, and... It is the hunting ground for Cole, the face stealer. Yeah. He preys on those paralyzed by despair and doubt. He must stop the villagers too. That's crazy. That, okay, they switched that up. They Cole will hold them really there switched that up. Until he's ready to feed. Tara and Sokka. There is no way to defeat him. I have to try. So instead of Heibai taking the villagers, it's Ko. Previous avatars have tangled with Ko. Roku once. Even got the best of the spirit. Roku. But nobody knows exactly what happened. Okay. I need to talk to Roku. Roku's temple is in the Fire Nation. Yes! Go to the Fire Nation. You couldn't have stopped the Fire Nation. I was too young at the time. You couldn't have prevented the war. You would have died too. You would have just died along with everyone else. It's not your fault. Let go of that fear. It's been can, pulling him down. Can we talk about it when I get back? Of course. You should hurry. Cole will feed again before too long. I don't think Gyatso is going to be here. I hope you can help me, Avatar Roku. Wait, is he about to go fly to the Fire Nation to go speak to Roku while they are just knocked out? Sorry, buddy. You can't come this time. What? You do, Mama. Hey, hell. Sometimes it feels like we'll always be alone. Zuko. And the only thing keeping us company is our own pain. Can't wait to see, you know, when that's blue. Especially when things we can't control come our way. The archers. That's why we must let go of our pain and regret. Yeah. And remember. What it is we're really fighting for. Bruh, how? The ones we love. Let that be the light that guides you through the most treacherous of times. He's in the Fire Nation. Wow, dude. And the darkest of nights. Next episode better hit, because I have a feeling I know what they're going to do. Um, I feel like they might do what I think they're going to do next episode, but I got to find out. But that's episode five. Sound off in the comments like you guys always do. But as always, let's talk about this episode. And that is episode five, you guys. I'm, I really want to hear your guys' thoughts on this episode. 
Um, I can tell a lot of people won't like this episode, and I can understand the other side that does like this episode. I'm in the middle. There are some really bright moments within this episode, but there's also some moments in which I'm like, why are they doing that? What are they doing? Yeah, it's not working. You know what I'm saying? It's like 50-50, but overall, I, I, I enjoyed this episode. I think this is like a 7 out of 10. I still enjoyed it. I mean, but they decided to cram in a lot. A lot in here. It's all spirits in this episode. They plucked spirits from book one, as expected, in this episode. Book two as well. Um, I believe. I don't think any spirits were from book three. I don't think so. What in the world, man? The owl, Wan Chi Tong, is in this episode. Shocked me. I thought he was tied to his library, but he's out of his library in the spirit realm. So they're definitely doing new things and things that are entirely different of the anim of the animated series. And I get that. This is an adaptation. They're doing their own thing. I understand that. But the lore around these certain things, they're throwing it out the window, I feel like. But not only that, you get hey by. I knew instantly once I saw the the woods absolutely burnt down, I was like, oh, we're getting hey by in this episode. But I was not expecting all the other spirits. And then plus Ko, they basically took the storyline for Hei Bai and passed it on to Ko. It was Hei Bai in the animated series taking the villagers, taking the people, took Sokka, right? In this, it is Ko taking Katara, taking Sokka, and has been taking all the villagers. So I'm like, okay, you're doing this now. You get the fox in this episode too as well. But I will say this, the biggest thing that I like about this episode is the way that they look. The spirits look amazing. Hey Bai looks good. The fox looks good. Um, the owl looks good. That scene was hilarious when they couldn't understand the owl and all they were hearing were the owl sounds. I thought that was hilarious. Um, but Ko, the face dealer, looks absolutely amazing. But they did not mention how you cannot have emotions when being confronted by the face stealer. They didn't mention that. That's what I know from the animated series. So did they throw that out the window? Because Katara and Sokka both decided to show emotions, which is what you're not supposed to do. And what happened? The face stealer basically took them. And Aang confronts the face stealer. I love that scene, just the look of it. Oh my God, they nailed Ko correctly. Hats off to them for doing that. Basically ends on a cliffhanger because Sokka and Katara are trapped in the spirit realm. They're trapped by Ko. So we have to see how that's going to play out in episode six. And the thing that this show is doing is cramming so much. That's the thing I don't like what they're doing and I get it it's only eight episodes I think the show could be better if you give an extra two episodes or you know go with the old format of having 13 episodes like they used to do and now they've bumped all these high budget shows to eight episodes but I understand that if you have longer episodes something has to suffer and that's usually the visual effects the CGI if not that the costumes the settings uh, the green screen that stuff starts to take an effect if you increase the amount of episodes. But if you decrease the amount of episodes to eight like they've been doing, therefore the budget can show off and things like that. But when that happens, you're going to rush things. And that is what they're doing. The pacing is by far the worst in this episode. Um, and the worst throughout the series. That is its biggest negative criticism that I have for this show is that they are flying by. I mean, Aang has yet to even start to waterbend, but there's been plenty of times in which Katara could have taught him. Not only that, Aang and Katara, during this time, there have been hints to them having a relationship. There's been like small flirting moments that happen within the animated series that tells you, that gives you actually hope for us viewers that maybe that relationship can work by its end of the show. Have they flirted? Have they done any of that? No, they've been just friendly. And that's a cool thing too, but it's like, you can start to establish that in season one and continue on their relationship more in season two. But I feel like the relationship with 
Katara and Aang is a little bit on the back burner, but Katara and Sokka, that relationship has been well more focused on than the Katara and Aang relationship. Do you see what I'm saying? So maybe they're going to, if this show gets a season two, that's the thing. We don't know. We don't know. I'm pretty sure they've been thinking about season two, but you got to think about Aang is a young kid. They are young actors. They're, they're playing. They're playing teenagers, and if they plan on making a season two, they got to get to it because, as we all know, we the, the Stranger Things. They're going through that in which the kids are like twenty years old, playing high school kids. We don't want that with Avatar: The Last Airbender because it's gonna look weird. It's gonna look funny, but yeah, that is. There are some things that they're putting on the back burner that I wish that they were not doing in this season and there's things that they are adapting and really nailing but there's also things that they are adapting and absolutely picking and choosing what can work for the show but tossing the lore and everything out aside which probably doesn't sit right with a lot of people and it can you know at times not sit right with me but i understand you can't compare and contrast with the animated show but it's a very hard thing to do when you you know, adore or something like that. And it's, you, you would want certain scenes from that animated show to be adapted in live action because you know it can work while also having the live action extend on those scenes and expand upon that or increase character development amongst its characters that were not shown in the animated show while also being in good service of the animated show. And I feel like this show is doing it, but it's kind of like a seesaw. It's doing it sometimes, it isn't sometimes, and it, 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 it's a mixed bag. And that is what I feel like this season has been. There are some bright moments, there are some extremely good moments, but then there are some moments that are just, you know, swept underneath the rug. You know what I'm saying? Or just not well adapted or they're doing their own thing, but it's just not hitting like it, you know, could have hit. But what also surprised me in here was the quick scene with Azula and the Fire Lord. He praises Zuko while also tearing down Azula. But in this show, I'm pretty sure it's going to discuss how both Zuko and Azula both have been abused by their father. I think that's the route that they are going. Whereas in the show, Azula high praise Zuko abused because we still have yet to see the scene in which Fire Lord Ozai I, I believe that's coming up it's got to be in episode 6 or episode 7 or episode 8 in which we see that Agni Kai happen between Zuko and his father I cannot wait for that moment but I think that's where they're going um, with the brother and sister of Zuko and Azula when it comes to their hardships growing up um, underneath their father. The water bending scene at the beginning of the episode threw me off because not only am I impressed by Katara, I'm like, dang, do you even need the help of other water benders that are masters? Because you're doing some things on your own. I, I would have thought that you would learn later down the line or in the finale due to Paku. But yeah, she's moving super fast. Uh, because obviously they got to get to where they got to get so they have to cram in these episodes and that's such a hard thing and instead of cramming one to two episodes of the animated shows in these live action episodes they are cramming in like three four five different storylines in one episode and this is a good example of them doing that with the many spirits that are in this episode but the last thing i'll talk about in this review is the ending of this episode ang going to the fire nation to talk to roku the scene with uh gyatso and ang just as good as ang talking to the face dealer but he's going to the fire nation by himself to go speak with roku why in the hell would you not bring appa and momo while also picking up the bodies of Katara and Sokka and having them on Appa but instead you leave them there by themselves with June. June is in this episode too as well. You see what I'm saying? There's a lot going on in here but yeah June is in this episode hired bounty hunter by Zuko and June is going to find them. I'm pretty sure. I, I guess Appa has to defend uh, Katara and Sokka now that their body is just laying lifeless there. 
So maybe we get a Nyla versus Appa fight. That was really good in the animated series. So th that's up in the air. That can uh, possibly happen in episode six. But this episode feels like a part one with episode six being a part two, just like how episode three was part one and part two was episode four. So we got a two-parter, basically. But yeah, June's in this episode. Um, June is awesome. I think the actress fits perfectly for June. Um, but yeah, that was stupid of Aang to leave their bodies behind. I didn't. I, I don't understand that. I, don't, I have no idea why that's happening. But episode six is uh, gearing up to be a banger if I know what they're going to do. I feel like I know what they're going to do. And that is the whole mass uh, thing going on with a certain character. So there's that. I'll catch you guys for episode six. There's so much I can talk about with episode five, but I've already been yapping way too long. Um, but if you've watched this review and watch my complaints and my positive feedback with this episode, thank you for sitting all the way through. I'll catch you guys for episode six. This is Really Than Reactions. I'm Really Than Miles. Peace. <laughs>